Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan Grek, and today a topic that continues the theme of things that I worry about or things that scare me a little bit when I'm driving around the world. And so this one is why I never ever drive in the dark once I'm going international. So you cross that border into Mexico and everything in Latin America, or you're in Africa, or you're in Central Asia, you don't ever want to drive in the dark if it can absolutely be avoided. And some of those reasons are purely enjoyment, some of them are safety, some of them are vehicle safety. And towards the end of the video, I'll tell a few stories about the couple of times I have driven in the dark and how badly I've regretted it. So if you're interested to learn more, stick around. I'll get into all the details right now. The first reason that I never drive in the dark is simply one of enjoyment. And that is I'm traveling through all of these countries and visiting all of these places because I wanna be able to see. I wanna look at the mountains or the lakes or the ocean or whatever else I'm passing by. Once it gets dark, you just can't enjoy any of that anymore. And to some degree, you'll pass through a region and you'll never know what it even looked like. Were they farming there? Was there a big forest? You won't actually know because you were driving in the dark. So in that sense, it's sort of a disappointment you're missing out on a segment of your trip. But much more importantly, the main reason I don't drive in the dark is due to road hazards. So once you're in the developing and the undeveloped world, first of all, the road surface is entirely variable. And I'll throw some clips up here. Obviously, I'm driving during the day, but I want you to imagine driving this in the dark. You have to navigate all of these potholes. Trust me, it's not fun at all. And the other big one too, is that in many countries in the world, people get sick of people zooming through their village really fast, so they make their own speed bumps. And if you lived in a small village and your kids were there and you really wanted to slow vehicles down, would you build a nice smooth speed bump or would you build a seriously steep one? Yeah, that's the kind that they build. So in Mexico, these are famously called topes. And trust me, once you've hit one at even 20 or 30 miles an hour, it's enough to lift all four wheels off the ground. It's terrifying. From then on, you crawl over them in first gear. Even in the daylight, I missed a couple and I've hit them at speed, which is not good for the vehicle at all. In the dark, they're virtually impossible to see. So the chances you're going to hit one are basically 100%. That's not a good thing. So as well as the road surface, you have to also worry about all of the other stuff that's going on on the road. Tons and tons of vehicles, they have terrible lights or they actually have no lights at all. So it's really common to have vehicles coming towards you in your lane, they don't even have any lights. Vehicles with no brake lights, no turn signals. So the chances of a vehicle crash in the dark, I think they go up times a hundred, maybe even times a thousand. And not only vehicles, you have to worry about all the people who are navigating the road as well. Especially in Africa, right around dusk is when everyone comes out to socialize. The heat of the day has passed and they all wanna come out and they use the roads as their walkways. So you've got people walking, bicycles, you've got animals, you've got tons of kids, people transporting all of their fruit and vegetables and goods back and forward. And all of this is happening on the road as the light is fading. You can't really see all of this stuff that's going on. And people aren't expecting vehicles to come through at speed because roads aren't always prioritized for vehicle use, they're for everyone else to use. So again, if you're driving through a village or you're on some rural road, you're whipping along in the dark, the chances you're gonna hit something unseen, maybe even just a whole herd of cows that decided to graze on the road, those chances go up a lot. So it's way, way, way more dangerous that you might hit a vehicle, you might hit a person, or even just one of those horrible speed bumps. So from that kind of safety perspective, driving in the dark, it just doesn't make sense at all. Another safety aspect that we have to consider is the idea that like bandits or some sort of bad guys are going to get you. And partially, this is probably true that if people were gonna set up like an, a fake roadblock, you know, and kind of flag you down and then pretend to check your documents and then maybe try and steal from you, the chances of them doing that in the dark is much, much, much greater than them doing it during the daylight. So if something bad was going to happen, I think it's way more likely it'll happen in the dark than happen during the day. 
So that's another reason I don't travel in the dark. But as well as that, there's kind of a psychological aspect. As soon as you drive along in the dark, everything gets a bit scarier. It feels like the shadows are out to get you. It feels like bad guys might jump out of the bushes at every moment. And I've experienced it a few times and it's not pleasant at all. It doesn't give me a good feeling. But amazingly, once I get up in the morning and I walk around on foot at street level and the, the sun's out, I'm like, oh, everyone here is actually really friendly. But somehow in the dark, people just don't feel as friendly. And certainly, you know, the military guys, the corrupt officials, they know this and they're going to use it to their advantage. So when you pull up at their roadblock in the dark, they're going to apply more pressure to get money out of you or try to hold you up for longer so you get even more stressed. So all of that kind of stuff, the dark just amplifies like the perceived danger as well as probably the real danger. But it's just going to play tricks on your mind and it's going to make you uncomfortable and unsettled. And it's not really pleasant and it's not something that you want to do with your trip. So again, I don't want to deal with any of that. And so that touches on the final reason that I don't drive in the dark personally. And that is just that it's really stressful. It's really stressful to worry about all the road hazards, all the vehicles with no lights, all the military or the bad guys that might try to give you a hard time. And it's also just really stressful to try and find a place to camp. Once it gets dark, the chances of you finding a wild camp are basically nil because you can't see anything off the side of the road because your headlights aren't there. And even if you do find a little track, it's really hard to poke down that track in the dark and try to figure out, you know, does it actually lead to a village and it's really busy or is it actually a good dead end and a good place to camp? Trying to find wild camping in the dark, yeah, it's too hard. And so then it compounds all of this stress of like, it's slowly getting darker and you get more and more anxious about finding a place to sleep. And I've even had it happen where, you know, maybe I look in iOverlander and I find an actual paid campsite, you know, and it says it's an hour away, but of course those estimates are always not accurate. So it takes two or three hours so that when I arrive, it's good and dark and you get there to find out that it's closed for the week or it's moved or it never really existed or one of a hundred scenarios where you're like, oh crap, now I'm kind of in this place, it is pitch dark and I have no plan at all of where I'm going to spend the night. From experience again, I'll tell you that is really stressful and it's something you want to avoid. In the future, I'll do a video about wild camping specifically, but my advice is always find a good place to wild camp at maybe three or four o'clock in the afternoon. You know, come down a logging road like I'm on right now, find your little spot and hang out for an hour and relax, read a book. You're gonna be way less stressed and way happier. So driving in the dark is to be avoided, but it kind of is inevitable, you know, due to bad planning, due to timelines, picking up friends from the airport, whatever, you probably will wind up driving in the dark at some point. So while I try to avoid it, it has happened a few times. Uh, I tried to drive across Honduras in a single day. So I had to drive from El Salvador, cross the border, cross all of Honduras and all of the corrupt officials, and then cross the border into Nicaragua and then keep going until I could find a place to camp. And inevitably, by the time I got into Nicaragua, the sun went down and I drove for a couple of hours fully in the darkness. And that was really stressful. There were horse and carts on the road. There were so many people on the road. And that was one of the times I vowed that I would never do it again. Of course, it did happen again. In Guinea at one point, I was checking out this beautiful waterfall and I guess I hadn't paid attention to how long it took me to get there. And so inevitably I was back on the highway and it was getting darker and darker. And with a big truck barreling along behind me, I was probably driving faster than I should have been. And I ended up hitting a pothole so big that all four wheels of the Jeep actually came off the ground. I heard them chirp when they landed again. Let me tell you that scared the absolute out of me. And actually after that, I realized that impact, it broke one of the sway bar end links on the suspension of this Jeep. So that's how hard of an impact it was. I physically broke my Jeep. So again, driving in the dark is just not a good idea. And in fact, many parts of the world, when I was in Southern Africa, I saw wildlife, sometimes big antelope type things, sometimes even elephants that had clearly been hit by vehicles. And obviously hitting something like that is not going to be good. In Australia, it's super common for people to hit kangaroos. Obviously, all across North America, people hit deer. 
And so, you know, those dangers, they just amplify so much. Really, really work hard and avoid driving in the dark, if at all possible. You'll be a lot safer and you'll enjoy your trip a lot more. So I hope that video has been helpful and I hope it sheds more light, haha, <laughs> good pun, on why you'd never want to drive in the dark. So it really is much more dangerous, it's much less enjoyable, it's much more stressful, and you know, at all costs, you really want to avoid it. So if it's been helpful, do hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. I'm bringing out new videos every Monday and every Thursday to help you guys get out on the road and take your overlanding to that next level. Go international, go to new countries, have all these new experiences. And if you'd like to learn more about where I'm headed next and the vehicle that I'm building, I'm posting all of those details over on Patreon right now. And so these people here, they're supporting me on Patreon and they're helping bring these videos to life. They're helping me buy new camera gear. They're making it possible for me. I'm jumping on a plane here in just four weeks to head out and start that next expedition. If you'd like to know where I'm going, head over to Patreon. All the details are there. I'm discussing the route, the weather, the reasons I'm building the vehicle I am. So that's all over on Patreon right now. And there's a link down in the description. So thanks very much again for watching. Stay safe out there and maybe I'll bump into you on the road.